To thee we come, O Lord, our God. Before we continue, let us pause and read from our bulletin, the second candle, the candle of peace. Peace, light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks, thanks to God. Today is the second Sunday of Advent and we will light the candle of peace. Last Sunday we lit the first candle on our Advent wreath and celebrated the patriarchs and the prophets of God. The first candle reminds us of our hope in Christ. We light it again as we remember our Savior, born a king in the lineage of King David. Jesus was born in Bethlehem, and we believe that he will come again to fulfill all of God's promises to us and to rule the world wisely and bless the nations. Let us then light the first candle. Today we light the second candle of Advent, the candle of peace. We remember the prophet who spoke of the coming of Christ, of how a Savior would be born, a king in the line of King David. The prophet Isaiah called Christ the Prince of Peace. He told us how he would rule the world wisely and bless all the nations. We also recall John the Baptist, who would bear witness to the Prince of Peace. When Jesus came, he taught people the importance of being peacemakers. He said that those who make peace shall be called the children of God. When Christ comes to us, he brings us peace, and he will bring everlasting peace when he comes again. We light the candle of peace to remind us that Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and that through him peace is found.
Peace is like a light shining in a dark place. As we look at this candle, we celebrate the peace we find in Jesus Christ to let us pray. Lord Jesus, light of the world, the prophets said you would bring peace and save your people from trouble. Give peace in our hearts at Christmas time. We ask that as we wait for you to come again, that you would remain present with us. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word, and to do your will by sharing your peace with each other. We ask it in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem. Amen. And now, let us continue Holy Mass by reciting together the second act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one of the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned and thought for in thee, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me, the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon and absolution and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you and with his authority. Vested in me by him, I absolve you of your sins. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. O oh God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord, so that we might enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony, to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light. <coughs> <coughs> Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was the beginning, and now, and ever shall be, world of God, and Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord God of Israel, you sent your prophets to prepare the way for our salvation. Prepare our hearts that we may joyously hail the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and always live according to his teachings. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit and our one God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful Father, we pray this day for the repose of the soul of our sister in blessed memory, Marsha Adamski, and we ask for your grace and blessing. Accept her into your eternal kingdom and bring us the consolation of always trusting in your care. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Sins. A voice cries out 
in the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up on to a high mountain Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Here comes the power of the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he carries the lambs, carrying them in his bosom, and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gradual. Our God comes and will not be silent. Devouring fire proceeds, storming fiercely round about. Your deeds of salvation will prevail, and God's heritage will fill our land. The second reading is from the second letter of St. Peter the Apostle. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like one day. The Lord does not delay his promises as some regard delay, but he's patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be, conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening for the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire? But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth, in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, as you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Jordan River, as they acknowledged their sins. 
John was clothed in camel's hair, with a leather belt round his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey, and this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord.
the messenger of the covenant whom you desire, see he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. And so John was born. Not only did John the Baptist have something to say, but it was the way that he delivered it. Having spent time in the desert, he was primed and he was ready to carry out God's plan. He had spent years in the wilderness living as a hermit, living off the land and trying, trying to clearly understand what he was called upon to do. From his birth, as we read in the Gospel of Luke, he was another miracle of God. John possessed no wealth, but his message was to be priceless. John was to be a great prophet in the Judea Christian tradition, chosen by God to be the messenger of the light, who was to lighten every man who comes into the world. If we look at the person of John the Baptist, it can truly be said that first of all, he fearlessly defended his possession. If John saw ordinary people living a godless life, he told them about it. Even the orthodox religious leaders, the Pharisees and the Sadducees who were corrupt, he told them all about it. John went as far as to renounce King Herod who had taken his brother's wife and were living in sin. This is what caused John to be thrown into prison. John did not care if he offended people. He simply told the truth and brought to light the darkness of man's sins. I've read that the Roman philosopher Diages had one time said, the truth is like a bright light to sore eyes. And that he who never offended anyone, never did any good. The time of politeness was gone, and the time of rebuke had come. And John called it as he saw it, and he didn't beat around the bush. It can be said that John called people to righteousness. His message was not merely negative denunciations. It was a positive call for all to live by the moral princi principles of God. He not only denounced men for what they did, he summoned them to do the things that were right. He not only condemned men for what they were, he challenged them to be what they could be. He was a voice calling men and women to a higher standard. He not only denounced evil and wrong, but he also set before man the good. As the theologian William Barclay put it, there are times when the church was too preoccupied to tell men what not to do and little occupied in setting before man the Christian ideal. My brothers and sisters, Christianity calls upon each of us to raise our own personal mark. That is why it is said that we are all under construction. Finally, John lived with a purpose. He was not only a light to illuminate evil, a voice to rebuke sin, but he was also a standard, a signpost, a neon light pointing to God. We read in John's Gospel, he came for testimony to testify to the light so that all men might believe through him. 
He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. God had in the life of John his main purpose to prepare the one, the ones who were to come in preparation of the one. It was the Jewish belief that Elijah would return before the Messiah came, and that John would be the herald of the coming of a king, a high priest, and a prophet. We read in the last book of the Old Testament from the book of Malachi these words, Behold, I send you Elijah the prophet before the great and terrible day of the Lord. We read that John stripped himself of his ego. He wore a garment of camel hair and a leather belt around his waist, which was the exact raiment that the prophet Elijah was to wear, as we find in the book of Kings. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, as the story of this Advent season is fulfilled, we see the importance of the one crying from the wilderness and his message to all of us is to prepare the way of the Lord within each of us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the name of Jesus Christ be praised now and forevermore. Amen.
creatures that are gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God our Heavenly Father. Receive our prayers as we prepare this sacrifice before you. Fill our hearts with your love and peace, so that we may know the presence of your Son among us. We ask this through the same, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, accept these gifts that we offer to you in faith and trust for the repose of the soul of our late departed sister, Marcia Adamski. May this offering unite us with your Son's suffering on the cross, which brings to us eternal life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Love 
through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We ask you, Lord, to graciously accept our offering of that of your whole family, and so order our days in your peace, that we may be saved from spiritual damnation, and counted among the flock of your chosen people, through Christ our Lord. Amen. O oh God, we ask you to bless, to accept, and to confirm this offering, and make it pleasing unto yourself, so that it may be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, and become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The day before his suffering and death, in order to manifest his infinite love to his disciples, and through them to all who believe in him, to fill the hearts of his followers with the fire of his love, draw them to himself, make them joyful, and save them, he instituted these holy mysteries, and we spiritually and bodily in his entire being, he again lives among his people. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, a holy offering, and an immaculate offering, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant, Abel, the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which a high priest Melchizedek offered you, a holy sacrifice in the magnet host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. We pray this day. Amen. Lord, remember your servants, especially our dear sister, in blessed memory, Marcia and Dazi, who has gone before us with a sign of faith and now sleeps in peace. <laughs> To her soul, O Lord, and all who rest in Christ, grant, we pray, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us, your sinful servants, who hope in the greatness of your mercy, some part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name. Their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy. Number us in their company, Lord, not wing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. By whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, and in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity with the Holy Spirit. Oh, forever and ever. Let us pray, instructed by our Savior's teaching, and then following. 
the mighty example, we say with confidence,
What shall they return unto the Lord? For all the graces he hath rendered unto me, I will take the chalice of salvation, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. With high praise will I call upon him, and I shall be saved from all of my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our one God, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, through this Holy Eucharist, we are united with our Lord Jesus, who rose from the dead. Hear our prayers on behalf of our sister, in blessed memory, Marcia Adamski, whose death we remember. Be joined with you in the new Jerusalem. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit and our one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you.
Thank you.